Praise the Lord. All the time. Amen. We welcome you to our program, Handfuls of Purpose. I am Pastor Brad Wright, and this is my wife and co-pastor Michelle here at His Life Ministries. Good morning. Amen. Good morning. Good morning to everybody. And there's nothing like starting out your day with the Lord and, and getting into His Word. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. Praise Give the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread, as we say it many times before. Amen. We need the bread of life in our lives. Amen. Each yes. day. Yes. New manna. Amen. Amen. So this morning, grab your Bibles and follow along with us. Yes. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to start in verse 1. Lord. And the Bible reads, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. And let's jump over to verse 8 now and go through what the spiritual gifts are. It says, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing, by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Thank you. Amen. And, and we'll probably have to break this up into two programs um, because there's a lot when it comes to discussing um, the gifts of the Spirit. Yes, amen. And many people call it the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we kind of finished up last week talking about that the gifts of the Spirit are for those who have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Yes. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a gift to those who are saved. Amen. So we're just continuing on with what we've been teaching in the last few weeks. Um, now we're into the gifts of the Spirit. And it's going to be an exciting yes. um, show today. Amen. Amen. And, and we have to understand the you know, being baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence to speak in other tongues like we've talked the last several weeks um, opens the door and gives us the potential to be used in the gifts of the Spirit yeah, because yes. we're now given power with God. We just don't have the power of God dwelling in us, but we have power with God now yes. um, to be used in these gifts Amen. of the Spirit just like the Lord um, worked in them through the leading of the Holy Spirit, just like the disciples and the apostles Yes. Um, work through them as well. But we have to remember, while being filled with the Spirit gives us the potential to be used in the gifts of the Spirit, it was the cross that paid for it. Paid the price. Amen. Open the door. Yes. We see that in Revelations chapter 2. Let's, let's go there and read that very quickly. Because before we talk about what the gifts of the Spirit are, we have to understand how they operate and why they operate. Yes. Amen. Revelation chapter 2. Mm-hmm. Revelation chapter 2. And this is when the, uh, they, the Lord told John the Beloved to write to the Ephesus church. Mm -hmm. And it says in chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know your works and your labor and your patience, and how you cannot bear them which are evil. And you have tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars, mm -hmm. and have borne and have patience. And for my name's sake have labored and have not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you, because you have left your first love. Mm -hmm. Remember, therefore, from where you are fallen, and repent and do the first works, or else I will come unto you quickly and will remove your candlestick out of his place, except you repent. Amen. Um, we, we see a strong warning here um, that if we leave our first love, mm -hmm. you know, the Holy Spirit is slowly going to start to diminish his moving and his operation yes. in the gifts of the Spirit. It won't happen all overnight, but it'll eventually and slowly start diminishing. It's like quenching a light. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's like kind of like when you take one of those candle snuffers and you go to to snuff the candle before you snuff it completely out. It's getting light. It's getting light, You know, darker and darker and darker and darker until eventually, you know, he says, "Behold, he'll take your candlestick." Amen. Amen. And our first love is what Jesus did at the cross. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's where we first came to Jesus, as yes. as the old song goes. 
um, when I when I saw the light. Yes. Amen. I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more <laughs> darkness. No, no more, more night. night. Amen. Amen. But it was at the cross. Yes. And and, and if the church leaves the cross. As its foundation. Mm -hmm. Yes. If the church leaves the cross, then we're going to see the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit diminish. We're going to see the gifts of the Spirit um, starting to diminish where they're no longer in operation. And, and, and really, we see that even in history. Um, as the apostles, the first generation started out proclaiming the message of the cross under the apostle Paul, the apostle Peter, James, and John. You know, the moving of the op and operation of the Holy Spirit was there. The gifts of the Spirit were in operation, yes. as we see in the book of Acts. But as the apostles and disciples started dying off, and their students started mm -hmm. eventually dying off, we see that the church started to apostatize slowly. And as the church slowly moved away from the cross, so did the Holy Spirit start to slowly diminish in his moving and operation in the gifts of the Spirit. Yes, amen, because he's only going to move where the cross is proclaimed. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And it's the Holy Ghost that draws, and yes. by his Spirit, men unto Jesus. And it's uh, really sad because you see that happening in a lot of churches where they started out right, just like here in mm -hmm. Ephesus, and then they turned and... It even said that they were doing good works, they were doing things, but they were not doing those things with the foundation of Christ as the object. And so he right. said, go back and do thy first works, amen. Right. That's where the Spirit of God can manifest himself. That's where the Spirit of God can move freely is where the foundation is the cross and the focus of the people is the cross, is the yes. object, amen. And then you see the gifts of the Spirit working to... Um, in, in dividing severally as he wills upon the people and using the people in these gifts to edify the entirety of the body. Yes, that's right. It, the foundation, it has to be centered around the cross of Christ. If it's not centered around the cross of Christ, the Holy Spirit will be quenched. Yes. Because the Lord said that the Holy Spirit will not glorify himself. No. He will only glorify Christ because of what Christ has done at the cross. So our faith and our emphasis has to be on the blood of Jesus Christ. And if we keep our focus on the blood of Jesus Christ, then and only then will the Holy Spirit have the latitude by grace to, to move and, 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 and touch hearts and lives and, and people be used in the gifts of the Spirit. Right. If not, it's slowly going to diminish, just as he warned, um, starting out with the warning to the seven churches. If we leave the cross... Mm -hmm. We're left with nothing. Yes, amen. Because that is where everything was hinged Except at. Except for flesh, amen, and charismatic movement. I mean, you're going to see a lot of flesh in action that they call gifts and things like that, but you would be able to discern and know that's mm -hmm. not of God. I mean, that's the only thing left is right. just a pseudo Holy Spirit, amen, because if you've got a pseudo Christ, you've got a pseudo Spirit because he said... Um, he said it was another gospel, another Jesus, and a, another, another spirit. Right, and and when the church try when the church leaves the cross, and and they try to manifest the spirit on their own works and and, and on emotionalism and and based on what they think they're doing, I would personally say that borders witchcraft. Yes, which amen. the Lord is not pleased with. Yes, I agree. Anything that is rebelling against the cross, he said rebellion is as witchcraft. Mm -hmm. So um, I agree with you there. Mm -hmm. and, and so it always has to be centered around the cross. I mean, we even see that with where all the Pentecostal and charismatic churches sprung from was actually back at the turn of the century in 1906 mm -hmm. um, when the Lord poured out his spirit on a street and on a, in a Lord of Barn a little barn on Azusa Street in California, yes. mm -hmm. and it was called the Azusa Street Revival, which we know in history were mm -hmm. for, I think, I believe it was three years, they had church three times a day, seven Revival. days a week, mm -hmm. and, and the, the Holy Spirit was poured out, people got baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. The gifts were in movement. The gifts were, were in operation, people, people were getting healed, yes. the land was walking, blinded eyes were being opened by the power of God. And as long as their focus and their center was around the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lord continued to move in a great and mighty great way for about three years straight. Three yes. services a day, seven days Even a week. Even to the point that at one point, wasn't if, if I'm talking about the right place, 
um, the right history, because you talk so much about church history, but wasn't it even to the point where the Spirit of God was moving so greatly that they sent fire trucks because they thought that the building was on fire? Oh, yes. At night, the Shania glory um, would be around that entire place. And there was people who literally, when they looked out uh, across the landscape and they saw the Shania glory on that building, yes. they thought the, the building had caught on fire and they called the fire department. Mm -hmm. And then when the fire department got there, they realized it was no fi fire, but yes. it was just the power of God. Wow. I mean, there was yes. a fire, but it was the fire from heaven that fell. And it wasn't a physical fire. It was a spiritual fire. It was the presence of the Lord. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He yes. can do the same thing he did at Azusa Street. He can do that today. And people will get yes. their focus off this world and the cares of this life and off themselves yes. and get their focus upon a, a risen Savior, you know, a crucified Savior who has risen for us. Amen. And, and God can still move again by His Holy Spirit, just the way He did in the past. And and all the Pentecostal and Charismatic churches sprung from Azusa Street, from mm -hmm. that outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I personally believe that was the start of latter times. Yes. The last of the last days. Yes, um, where He would pour out His Spirit. Upon yes, and that's flesh, where the, the, the full gospel, the four square God mm -hmm. uh, church came out of, the Pentecostal uh, Church of God, mm -hmm. the Assemblies of God, these all sprang. Um, from Azusa Street when God manifested himself in a great and mighty way and, and there was miracles and the gifts of the Spirit um, in, in, in operation. But, yes. And as we said, that, that went on for three years straight. Yes. Um, three times, think of that, service three times a day, seven days a week. Yes. Church was always going on. Mm -hmm. People were getting saved. People were getting filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence to speak in other tongues. People were being yes. healed. Amen. The lame were walking. The blinded eyes were being opened. And, and the Lord moved like that in a mighty way. But some people ask, well, what happened to Azusa Street? Azusa Street eventually fell um, because division in the church. Mm -hmm. where you had half of the apostles of that day, and I believe Brother Seymour um, was the chief apostle of that time that led Azusa Street. But some of the other uh, apostles of that day um, who led that, um, as the Lord outpouring, yeah. who led that movement, they started having division on where their faith was supposed to be, mm -hmm. where they started getting their focus on speaking in other tongues. They got their focus on the miracles. And you had the other half of the apostles who said, no, our focus needs to be on the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. And then you had the other half saying, no, our focus needs to be on the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the speaking in other tongues and the gifts. And what happened is, about the Bible says, a house divided cannot, cannot stand. stand. That's how and, can two walk together except they be agreed. And because the apostles moved away from the blood of Jesus Christ after a span of about three years, Azusa Street started diminishing and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit started diminishing to where there was nothing left. Yes, and that will still happen today. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and we see it with a lot of the Pentecostal realm as well. Um, and your uh, Pentecostal denominations, your charismatic denominations, where they have moved away from the blood of Jesus Christ, where their focus is no longer the blood of Jesus Christ. And we see a lot of Pentecostal denominations to where they're nothing more than an outer shell of what they used to be. Yes. Um, and now not, we're not saying that every church is like that. No. Um, there still are some Pentecostal churches around who have centered around the blood of Jesus Christ and, and who have the gifts of the Spirit operating, but it is, it, they're, they're, few and far they're few and far beyond, mm -hmm. and they're literally dying off because as we see in the last days, it's, the Bible says, some shall depart from the faith, faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, giving heed to seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils. And that's why we don't see much of the gifts of the Spirit anymore. Anything that's not of faith is a doctrine of devils. Mm -hmm. That's right. Seducing spirits. That's right. It, it has, our focus has to be on the blood of Jesus Christ. If our focus is not on the blood of Jesus Christ, there is no help of the Holy Spirit. There is no gifts of the Spirit in operation. There is no resurrection, life, and power, as we talked about. Yes. There is no life in the Spirit, and there will be nothing but sin and bondage. Amen. Yes, I agree. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and we and in these last days, the church has to get back to the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And if we do, we will see the Holy Spirit start moving once again. We'll see the Amen. gifts of the Spirit, which will present Christ that He is real, He is alive, and He is coming back. Coming and, very soon. Yes, Amen. yes. I, I personally believe. Now, again, the Bible says only the Father knows. Mm -hmm. 
when the Lord Jesus is going to come back and rapture us out of here. But I personally believe that we're so close. Um, again, I, I don't know when he's coming back, but we see the signs of the times. Yeah, he said when you see these signs, that he's even at the door, meaning mm -hmm. that he's already there mm -hmm. waiting for the Father to say, go and get my children. I remember it was, it was several years ago, there was a tongue and interpretation um, at a little church that we was going to at the time. And I remember the Lord speaking through the gifts of the Spirit and prophecy. And the Lord said that he was no longer sitting at the right hand of the Father, but he was standing at the right hand of the Father, waiting for him to say, go get my children. Yes. And there's only one time we see the Lord Jesus standing next to the Father rather than mm -hmm. sitting. And that is in the book of Acts when Stephen was stoned and he looked up and he saw the Lord, the Savior, standing mm -hmm. next to the right hand of the Father. And then the Lord took Stephen home, which was a picture of the rapture. Amen. And I personally believe we're that close, that soon and very soon the trump of God is going to sound. And, and, I agree. and the gifts of the Spirit, if they're in operation, will profit everybody to show the world that Christ is alive, Christ is real, He is true, He is the Son of God, and He is coming back very soon. And there is another instance in the Bible where we see Him standing. Mm -hmm. And um, it is actually in Revelations, and it's, um, let me get there really quick, kind of back where we were, but it's actually the last church age, which is the Laodicean church age. Mm -hmm. And we read in the Laodicean church age about an apostate church that it says, um, just kind of here, just kind of skimming through, he says, so then he says, I know your works that you're neither hot nor you're cold. I would that you were hot or cold. So then because you are lukewarm, neither cold or hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. He's referring into the great tribulation. Because you say, I am rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. He, you see, they, they left the cross. Right. And they were saying that I'm rich, I'm increased with goods, I have need of nothing. That they were in need of nothing. But then we see here Jesus saying, Behold, I stand at the door, and, and I knock. knock. And then when you read back in Matthew, I believe it's in 24, where he goes through the signs of the times, he says that he is already even at the the door. When you see these signs come around you, he says, I'm at the door. That coincides with the Laodicean church where Jesus is standing at the door and he's knocking on this the, the religious door because the time of his coming is at hand. Yes. yes. I mean, we see after that in verse 4, we see immediately the rapture preceding the church age. Amen. Yes. And so he's standing at the yes, door, knocking upon the apostate churches, begging them to pleading with them to repent and do their first works, repent and get back to the cross, because that's the only way we're going to make make it out of here. Amen. I personally believe the the message that the Holy Spirit is giving in, the, in these last days is come back to the blood of Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. Come I back agree. to the cross. It come back to cry. that one path, which it's a narrow path, but it's a path that leads to life and life come more back abundantly. to the old past, just like Jeremiah said, where is in the good way. The and I, and I personally believe the Lord is going to make himself known in these last days. And, and we are going to see great and mighty things, just like what we see in the Bible. I personally believe Bible yes, days are back. I believe so too. Because in Jesus' first miracle that he did was turning water into grape juice. Mm -hmm. And when he gave that grape juice, that with that miracle that he gave, turned the water into grape juice and gave it, um, to the, the groomsmen and such, and they drank of it, and they said, they said, my Lord, this he saved the best for last. Yes. And I personally believe that's a spiritual indication that in these last days, he saved the best for last. We are, we are going to see great signs and miracles and wonders to prove that Jesus did raise from the dead. Yes. He did Amen. die at the cross. He truly was buried. He truly did raise from the dead. He truly did ascend and send back the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he is alive and well today at the right hand of the Father. I know a lot of people say that that saying, the best is yet to come, is not a true saying because the Lord said that, you know, it was that the world and just everything was waxing worse and worse. But the thing is, for the Christians, for those who are truly in Christ and have their faith in the blood of Jesus, the best is yet to come. Mm -hmm. And even in the face of adversity and in the face of persecution, which we may face 
if this country continues to go in the route that it is going, we may face some persecution. But in the midst of the pressure, in the midst of that, God can move greatly. Yes in a great and oh, a yes. mighty way. You've seen that overseas in the countries where they're being persecuted, how that the Spirit yes. of God would just move so greatly. Yes, when you see in the Bible time and again, especially in the book of Acts, whenever the true church is persecuted, mm -hmm. we see God lifting up a standard through His power and presence, presenting the message of the cross to yes. people, presenting the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I personally believe we're, we are going to see some great and mighty things, not to glorify a church, yes. not to Amen. glorify a denomination, not to glorify a pastor or a preacher, but to glorify the man, Christ Jesus, who paid it all at Calvary's cross. And if the church will come back to the cross, we will see the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit move once again. Amen. Just like in the Gospels, just like in the book of Acts. Amen. We're going to see it. There's going to be some separating of the wheat and the tares in these last days. But God is surely going to do a great and a wonderful work. Amen. Amen. Now, I, I know some people think that the gifts of the Spirit are for today. But that's not true. Because he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, he says... Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, and this and and when we read the Bible, I don't look at it as a history lesson. I look at it as the Lord speaking to me personally. Mm -hmm. As you read the Bible, as you read along, it should be the Lord speaking to you directly to your spirit and soul. And this is the way I take it. It says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, and, and I like to sometimes I like to put my name in there. Yeah. Where I feel like the Lord's speaking to me, where I can say, Now concerning spiritual gifts, Brad. I would not have you ignorant. Yes. That's the Lord telling me that He doesn't want us to be deceived or ignorant or 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 or, or think that it's not for today when it really is. Yes. Or else He wouldn't to miss, say. He doesn't want us to miss out on what all He has for us. Oh for yes. For us individually, as for us as a church, as corporately. I mean, He doesn't want us to miss out mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And and there's still for today the greatest miracle. We're all going to see. Every believer is going to see the dead raised. Yes. Amen. And, and, and we'll see that at the rapture. So to say that the gifts of the Spirit, healing, the raising the dead aren't for today, that's foolishness. It is foolish. Because the church age is going to end with the greatest miracle ever, which will be the rapture of the church. Amen. Where those who are dead in Christ first are going to raise from the dead and be yes. reunited with their soul and we body which are alive in, in, the in the air. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. So the greatest miracle. Yes. We're all going to see one of the greatest miracles, the dead being raised and the rapture happening. Amen. And, and, and that's proof in itself to say that the gifts of the Spirit are still for today. If it happened in the book of Acts, yes. if we can expect it to come at the end of the church age, then well, then assured. we can be assured that he's still doing it today. Amen. I agree. Amen. And, and we have to understand as well, you know, the gifts of the Spirit, which mm -hmm. we will be teaching on in this program and the next program, and we'll really dive into the nine gifts in the next program, but we have to set the basis yeah. for we how the gifts understand. work. Yes. If, if we don't understand how the gifts work, then us teaching just on what each gift is isn't going to matter. We have to get the foundation right first, the blood of Jesus Christ. And if understand the foundation that. isn't right, then it's not the Spirit of God manifesting. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that. And, and we have to understand as well that it says in verse 11, it says, But all, the, all these work that one and self-same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Yes. So, and that word he is referring to the Holy Spirit. So... A preacher or a church doesn't make the decision on who gets to use, be used in the gifts of the Spirit. That is totally and completely in the realm of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That is His decision there, on who He uses. There are churches out there that do try to say that they anointed somebody to be a pastor or anointed mm -hmm. somebody to be used in the revelatory gifts or in the vocal gifts. or what. Well, that's not true. Mm -hmm. God, only God can anoint one to be used in the gifts of the Spirit. We have to understand, number one, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord and the anointing is upon Him. Yes. The anointing belongs to Jesus Christ. The anointing does not belong to any preacher. No. It does not belong to any church denomination. The anointing of God belongs to Jesus Christ because the Spirit right. of the Lord is, is upon, upon him. him. 
So we don't, we as believers, we only get to be joint heirs. We get to share in the blessing of the anointing that is upon Christ. But right. it still belongs Which is given to every to man in measure. And the Holy Spirit divides out how he wants the gift to be used and who he wants to be used in. Yes, amen. So that tells us that people who try to sell holy water and say it's the anointing and mm -hmm. things and, and prayer shawls that they anointed or sweat or whatever have you that they try to sell saying it's the anointing is error. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't doubt the motives um, and I don't judge the hearts of those who want to see the gifts of the Spirit we just don't see it in now. operation, but we have to understand how the Lord operates with the gifts and how the Holy Spirit works. And we have to understand that the Spirit of the Lord is upon the Lord Jesus Christ, and the anointing belongs to Him. Yes. We get to be partakers and joint heirs of Christ, but the anointing still belongs to Him. So we have within ourselves no right to decide um, who gets called and, and who gets anointed because that is in the realm of the Lord. He is the head of the church. And the Holy Spirit divides out the gifts of the Spirit as He wills. Yes. Because He knows the hearts of man and He knows who He can trust to yes. use the gifts properly. Amen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. He divides it separately as He wills. Amen. And, and, and we have to understand as well that the gifts of the Spirit don't operate like a cookie cutter where it works the same way for every single person. Yes. And because it says, in, starting in verse 4, it says, Now there are diversity of gifts, mm -hmm. meaning different types of gifts, mm -hmm. but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, yes. but the same Lord. Mm -hmm. And there are, ministries. yes, and there are diversities of operations, meaning different ways the gifts work. Yes. But it's the same God which works all in all. Yes. So we have to understand that when the gifts of the Spirit are in operation and the Lord uses people, sometimes the Lord will direct them in a way to use that gift of the Spirit, but it won't be used in the same way as what it is with somebody else. Yes. And, and, and so we have to understand we can't confine the Lord into a box and think mm -hmm. um, that the gifts work or will... Um, that somebody will be used in the exact same way like a cookie cutter. Right. Now, it, it works in the same way through faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, being exactly. filled with the Spirit. Yes. But as the gifts are in operation, many of the times the Lord will will direct somebody, and, but will still be using those gifts, but it'll be a little bit different. Yes. Or it's Amen. different. Because there will, there's different personalities God's working mm -hmm. with that we have, different flesh you know, all of our different ways at times because we're all made a little different. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so everything is going to come off just a little bit different at times, but as long as it's decent and it is in order and it is according to the Word and it is the Spirit of God, then we can be assured that something good is going to come from it. Amen. And if we have our faith right in the blood of Jesus Christ, if we yield to the Holy Spirit and let Him fill yes. us, we can be assured He will use us in the gifts of the Spirit as he wills. Yes, amen. amen. And the Bible says in verse 7 that it will profit everybody. Everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's all the time we have for today. God bless all of you. Jesus loves you.